welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, we are going to be sublimating on car coasters in two different kinds. We've got the ceramic and we've got the neoprene that we're gonna be sublimating on today so that I can show you the difference between the two because there is a difference. There's gonna be a difference in the time, the pressure and the heat on both of these. If this sounds like fun to you, tag along. All right, let me quickly show you the difference between the two. So this one's gonna be your ceramic car coaster. And you can see most of them are gonna come with like a coating on it. And this coating is what helps us be able to sublimate on this car coaster. Now, if you turn it around to the back, I really don't think you guys are gonna see this on camera, but this is like white, white, and this is like off white. The off white and the rougher surface, that's gonna be your stone, that's gonna be your ceramic. The other side that's like white, white, and very soft and smooth, that is where you're gonna be sublimating your image. It's not flexy or bendable at all because this is ceramic. Then we've got our neoprene. Again, there's the two side by side. Now with the neoprene, you can sublimate on this. It's gonna have two sides typically. One's gonna be like the black side and then the other side's the white side. Of course, you're gonna be sublimating on this white side. It is definitely flexible and bendy. So that's the difference between these two blanks. Now, where did I get them? Um, off the top of my head, I believe I got the neoprene blanks at my craft source. I wanna say they were about $2 and they come in a pack of two, so they're about a dollar each. Um, and then with the car coasters, I know you can get these on, and I don't think I got these ones from rtssublimationblanks.com, but I know you can get some there. These are gonna be very comparable to theirs. I wanna say I got mine off of uh, an Etsy shop months and months ago because I wanted to try it. Um, but with their website, if you go to rtssublimationblanks.com, I believe theirs are currently for sale for $6 for a, pair, a package of five. So again, that's gonna be your ceramic, rtssublimationblanks.com, and then your neoprene um, at my craft source for around $2 for a pack of two. Now, at the time of recording this video, which is, I don't remember what day it is, but we're in March, 2022. So you could be watching this a year from now and the prices are more than likely gonna be a little bit different. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the ceramic ones because I already have my heat press on. Um, it's already heated up and it's heated up at the higher temperature. And then when we go to do the neoprene ones, I can lower that temperature. So for the ceramic coasters, let me get my notebook just to remind myself. So on these ones, you really wanna follow the guidance that you've bought your blank from. I could not find where I bought these, I couldn't remember, but I know that RTS Sublimation Blank sells these, so I went to their website and I looked at their recommendations for the ones they sell. Um, and on there, they're said to make sure that you're pressing these for 400 degrees with medium pressure for about 120 seconds. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with 90 seconds, and then if I feel like I need to go a little bit longer, then I will, but I feel like in the past I've pressed for 120 seconds and it started discoloring them. Like if you press for too long, your blacks will actually start to turn a little like brownish green. So you kind of want to watch that. And there's nothing wrong with stopping it at about 90 seconds and pressing it for a little bit longer if you need to. So we're going to go ahead and start at 90 seconds with these and press longer if we need. Okay, so my images, I've already printed these out. You guys can pick whatever images you want to do. I actually design these myself just through bits and pieces of images that I've collected. Um, I do most of my designing either in Procreate or Design Space. Um, and then I just printed it out with my sublimation printer. If you guys are not familiar with sublimation, I will go ahead and link up above. Um, I don't remember what side. I'm gonna link up above a tutorial for you know sublimating for beginners because there's a lot that goes into it. You have to have a special kind of printer, special kind of paper, special kind of ink, and a special kind of substrate or blank. So make, go ahead and finish this video, but make sure that you go back and watch Sublimation for Beginners so that you guys can get your basic knowledge on how to do sublimation. Okay, so with these prints today, this was with Epson ink. Again, it's Epson sublimation ink, not the regular ink. And then this is Starcraft paper, and I used it with my Epson 15,000 printer is how I printed these. Um, and of course, whenever you're doing sublimation, make sure that you mirror your image so that it's backwards to you when you're looking at it. You're like, oh, that's gonna look funny. It needs to be backwards because when we go to lay our blank on it, it has to mirror it so that when it's once pressed, it will actually be perfect. 
So just make sure that when you're doing your sublimation printing, print it backwards, mainly if you're doing words. So in my case, I have words on both of these. And if I wouldn't have mirrored the image, when I go to press the design, it's gonna be backwards, you're not gonna be able to read it. Okay, so the best way to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and just separate these two just by cutting straight across. And what I did is I just measured, again, the measurements are typically gonna be on the website you purchased your blank from, but I just got my measuring tape and I measured across to see how big these were. Um, I can't remember the exact dimensions that I did, but I did a little bit bigger than the actual design. All right, I changed the angle of my camera just to kind of show you what this is going to look like and how you lay it down. So you wanna make sure that when you're sublimating it, you wanna make sure it's right side up, which to you, you get to decide how you want that. In my case, like I said, I don't want these words to be cut off and I'm kind of nervous that, well, actually maybe they won't be cut off. Nope, they're not. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this to the side. So you're gonna get the side that's shiny, like I said, very white, soft side. Um, and I'm gonna put that face down about there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Now in this case, you could definitely tape these down if you didn't want them to shift, but make sure you're using heat resistant tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You definitely don't wanna use regular tape or that would be a real hot mess. You know, I probably made these designs a little too small. It's okay, I'm not that picky. Definitely have made these a little bigger. Gosh, you know what? Because I did these too small, I'm gonna go ahead and cut around them instead, you guys. I could reprint, but these are for me and I'm not, I'm not gonna be picky. So I'm just gonna cut around them like this just so that I can see them better on how they're gonna line up. That works for me. And then instead of doing it down, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them like this and just get them as center as I can. I'm gonna hold it in one hand, look all the way around, grab my heat resistant tape and tape it on. Now, please, you'll see this once I actually sublimate on these. Um, because I did these a little too small, the outside of this is actually gonna be white, the color of this um, ceramic tile which is fine. Like I said, it's, it's not a big deal to me. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one as well. I'm gonna do the same thing, making sure we're putting it on the shiny side, holding it in one hand and just trying to center it the best we can. And then getting my heat resistant tape and taping it down. All right, those ones are now prepared, ready to go. Now let's grab our other ones. So these are gonna be the neoprene ones. And I know I printed these ones big enough. I sure hope I did, yeah, I did. So as you can see, this is what I was trying to do with the other ones, but I clearly had my measurements off. Um, I try and make the design just a little bit bigger to help you know, overcompensate. It's okay if it goes you know, outside of the line and that way I don't have any of the white showing. Um, on this one, I definitely don't want the design cut off. And if I put this here, just a little eyeball in it here, it doesn't look like it's gonna cut off any of that design, so that's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Same thing with this one. And I think it looks best when you're doing a pair like this to have both of those notches in the same spot on the design. Otherwise, it might look a little off. Now this is, um, this is where I would tape down both of these so that they don't shift like so let's do this one as well hopefully I have those on yep again we're doing it so that this is not going to shift during the sublimation process and really two two pieces of tape um, for each blank it should be sufficient Okay, so now that we've got the blanks taped down and prepared, let's go ahead and prepare a press. So in every time I sublimate, I am so careful with this heat press. I don't wanna accidentally let the sublimation ink 
bleed or ghost onto my heating element or my platen. So I typically always have, if you watch my other videos, I have a Teflon sheet that I have, um, these are magnets and I have it just stuck to my press at all times so it never comes off. And then I've got one that I cut to size for the bottom as well. Now you will hear, don't use Teflon sheets when you sublimate. And that is true because Teflon can actually trap in the moisture. And when you sublimate, you don't want any moisture. Oh, you guys, guess what I just forgot to do? I forgot to prepare these. You typically need to wipe them down really good so that there's no, <laughs> see you guys, if you watch my videos, you know, I make mistakes. And then I'm like, wait, hold up. Let me remind you what to do. So before I put the image on them, I should have made sure that I wipe them down with something like this. I just have a piece of lint uh, resistant fabric that I use and I just kind of wipe them off so that you don't have any fingerprints or anything like that on them. On the neoprene, you can get a lint roller and roll across them. Because these are for me, and honestly, just to train you guys and show you how I do it, I'm not gonna take them apart and I'm not gonna clean them. So do as I say, not as I do, right? Okay, so let me get back to the point about the moisture and sublimation. With this Teflon sheet, it will trap in moisture. So you never want to use just the Teflon sheet. So you'll want to have a butcher paper on top and on bottom to help counteract the Teflon trapping it in. The reason I have my Teflon in, again, it's just an extra precaution to make sure that no matter what, sublimation ink is never going to bleed onto it. Um, and same thing if I'm using HTV or anything else that might melt to my platen, this is another reason, not to my platen, um, and to my heating element then I make sure that I have something to protect it so that if it's gonna melt to anything, it's gonna melt to my Teflon sheet and not to my heating element. All right, let's get some. Let me get some butcher paper. And we really don't need a ton. Probably cut this in half. Um, or even blanket it in like this. Be perfect. So I've got my butcher paper. Let's start with the ceramic ones since I've got my temperature at 400 degrees. What I'm doing is I've got the ceramic tile on the bottom, and then I've got the print on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and sandwich it in between these two. Just like so. Now these need medium pressure. If you have too much pressure, they can actually crack and break. So I'm gonna reduce some of my pressure here. And I may have to play with it a few times. Truly the best thing to do, you guys, before you even prepare your image onto your blank, is go ahead and put your ceramic tiles under there um, test it out to see what the pressure is. In fact, I have some. Let's try that first. I'm gonna take these down and grab one of my ceramic blanks right here. Just grab that real fast. Way too loose. Tighten it up just a tad. That's actually perfect. Um, it didn't take too much arm strength to close it. It's gonna be a little bit hot. It didn't take too much arm strength to close it, so you know that's gonna be a medium pressure grab these back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to get them in the middle so that they have equal, um, equal pressure. If I were to bring it to the end here or the end back there, they may not have equal pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and lower this for 90 seconds at 400 degrees with medium pressure. Here goes. While we're waiting on those, I can show you a few that I've made in the past. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, I think these are them. I've sold a few, but I can at least show you. Here's one I made. That's with the ceramic tiles. Coasters. Um, this one I made, but I didn't like the color that it turned out. <laughs> Cute little leopard, but it was a little too orangey for me, so I have to fix the colors. These ones I think are funny, because if you're like me and my husband, we always fight over like whose drink is whose. So it's a mine and yours <laughs> for the car. Isn't that funny for drinks? I think that's funny. Um, I think that's all of them. I think I sold the other ones. Where are we at? We've got 40 seconds left. And I don't have a, any of my neoprene ones left. Those all sold. Um, I don't feel like people like more than another. Um, it's totally based on preference. But the nice thing about the neoprene ones, they're going to be lighter to ship and less fragile. So you don't have to worry about them breaking in the mail when you're shipping them out. Just food for thought. All right, these are gonna be really hot, you guys. So we wanna make sure that we have heat resistant gloves 
to be able to look at our images. You don't want to touch them. Let's go ahead and lift this. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab my little spatula here, my little Cricut spatula, so that I can kind of test them out and see what color they are, see if I'm happy with 90 seconds or if I want to go the full 120. So putting both my gloves on to be safe, just barely lifting it. And they actually look perfect. I'm gonna pull them at 90. I don't wanna do it any longer because I don't want the black. Like I said, it can go like a green or a brown when you overcook it. So I'm gonna take these off. They are hot. I've got a heat pad here. I'm just gonna let them sit on the heat pad. Okay, you typically do not want to reuse your butcher paper if you just sublimate it. However, if you have StarCraft paper, it doesn't bleed through, at least from what I have experienced. I have not experienced like very, very little uh, bleed through. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this. The reason you wouldn't wanna reuse it is if your paper does bleed through, when you go to reuse this paper, then whatever image it is that you pressed can possibly press onto your next blank. So let's grab these. We're gonna grab the neoprene ones that we've already prepared. Again, we wanna make sure we flip it this way because the image needs to be face up so that the image is on the heating element. Okay, go ahead and put those there. I'm going to grab this. Oh, ooh, you guys almost messed up. This is way too hot. I'm gonna stop right there, stop. Pull these off. This is way too hot. I need to reduce my temperature to 385 degrees and it's less seconds, it's only 45 seconds. So let me fix those temperatures and time before we sublimate this. Oh, that was close. <sighs> Please tell me I'm not the only one that like gets going and then I'm like, ah! Uh, I'm so glad I caught that because with the neoprene, it could definitely have scorched it a little bit and maybe even discolored it. Um, on the white part and I definitely don't want that to happen. So make sure that you're adjusting your time and your temperature. Um, the pressure on this one can be a little bit higher, um, you know, heavier pressure than on the ceramics because we don't have them, you know, the risk of them breaking. Um, so I'm just gonna increase my pressure just a teeny bit while we're waiting for that temperature to come down, which is coming down pretty quick. It's already at 390. Um, let's go ahead and kind of take a peek at these to see what they look like. They're still gonna be hot. They usually stay hot for about 10 to 15 minutes. So keep your distance, be careful. And if you've got little ones in the home, make sure you're watching their fingers because it definitely could burn them. I mean, this is 400 degrees. They would be touching something that was 400 degrees. So be careful. Okay, I'm gonna pull off slowly to show you. I wanna look at both sides real fast. Yep, looks good. Ta -da, ta da So cute. Sticking on my fingers. Look how cute that turned out. Ta-da. So it says buckle up buttercup. I mean, how cute is that? That's adorable. Now, can you guys see what I mean by I accidentally cut it a little too short? So if I would have actually over measured like I was planning on doing, then you wouldn't see the white line all the way around. It would have been buffalo plaid all the way to the edges. So that's why I'm saying go just like a few centimeters bigger than you need, which I thought I did, but clearly I didn't, um, so that you don't have those white lines. But I think these turned out adorable. Let's check out the next one. Yep, this one turned out great as well. I love them both. These are going in my car. I think they're so cute. Adorable. Love them. Okay, I'm gonna keep those on my heat pad so they don't burn my table. And we are down to 385. So let's go ahead and get pressing on these neoprene ones. Right back where they need to be, right in the center. Um, I've already changed my time and temperature. Good. So we'll go ahead and check back in 45 seconds. All right, now these ones shouldn't be as hot as the ceramic ones. These ones are gonna be more like, you know, your t-shirts and stuff, but because the fabric is a little bit thicker, they are gonna be a little bit hotter than like if you were pulling off a t-shirt. So definitely still be careful. The other thing to mention is neoprene is stinky when you press it. So don't be too worried about that smell. It's just the neoprene. It just has a different, almost like a rubbery smell when you press it. 
Now, a lot of people will say, and I'm not gonna say yes or no, that you probably should wear a mask when you're pressing sublimation. Um, my biggest thing is I just make sure that I'm in a well-ventilated area. I've got a big enough room here and I usually have my window cracked or a door open so that I have really good airflow when I'm sublimating. So let's just take a quick ganda and see how these ones turned out. See if I need to press them a little longer. Oh, I was off center on one of them. Wham! It's okay. They're still adorable. My husband will still love me. I was totally off center. You know what though, you guys, this is why I do what I do so that you guys can see me make mistakes and then you're gonna be like, I'm not gonna do what Emma did. So, they actually turned out really cute. These ones I made for my husband's car. And we have a saying that like, when we're kissing each other goodbye in the mornings and he's off to work, um, or if I leave and I'm off to somewhere, then we have this thing that we say and it's just come home to me. Like, just come home. Like, I just wanna make sure you return my home safely. Like, instead of saying, hey, drive safe, because that drives him nuts. Like, well, you know, woman, wife, don't tell me how to drive. I just say, come home to me, you know? So I made him some cute little car coasters that say, come home to me. Aren't they cute? Now you can see this one, I was off center. See how you can see that white there? That's it, oops. You definitely wouldn't wanna sell this. So luckily it's cheap and I can make me some more. That's why it's really important to do your measurements and make them bigger, maybe even by like a half an inch just to be super safe so that you don't have this happen to you. So what mistakes did you learn from me today? <laughs> I swear, mistake number one, make sure that you prepare your blank. So in this case with the neoprene, using a lint roller to get any of that lint off before you place your image is tip number one, okay? Um, tip number two, make sure that your image is about, again, I'm gonna say half an inch bigger than your blank so that you don't have that mistake, right? And then what was my third mistake? Oh, but I didn't, it didn't happen. Make sure that you switch your time and temperature between substrates. Luckily I caught that one, but those are definitely three things that you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to when you're sublimating these cute little car coasters. All right, you guys, that is it for today's tutorial. What did you guys think? Are you guys gonna try this too? I thought it was really fun. And even though I made some oopsies, I hope you guys learn from it and I hope that you guys try it. I know that sublimating can be kind of scary, especially when you try sublimating on a new substrate. Don't take yourself too serious. And if you make an oopsie like I do, just shake yourself off and try again because that is the only way you're going to learn. I have sublimated on these numerous times and I made a mistake today. It happens, it's fine. And I'm not gonna go cry about it, I'm just gonna keep trying. This one is definitely savable. I don't know if I would sell it, but because it's for me, I don't mind that it has that extra white around it. But again, I would make my image a little bit bigger if I was gonna press this again. The next one is of course, same thing. It's, I didn't have it on center. If my image would have been bigger, it would have been a lot easier to eyeball that and make sure that didn't happen. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are gonna try sublimating on car coasters, whether it be neoprene or ceramic. I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Make sure that you join us in our Facebook group, which is Emma's Cottage DIY, where you can share your photos of what you created. I love to see what you guys create from watching my tutorials. Don't forget that I am now on Instagram and TikTok. So if you want to follow me on some short tutorials versus these longer ones that I get a little bit more detailed, then go ahead and check me out on those two social media platforms. But as always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up so that I know that I'm giving you guys the content that you're looking forward to. Make sure that you subscribe, but the most important part, you guys, ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.